Hello, it's Mr. Sorbas here. Today we are going to test an alternative physics engine for Blender called V-Dynamics. This video is not an ad, I bought the add-on with my own money. V-Dynamics is a soft body simulator. When this video was recorded, the add-on was still in public beta, and that's why it's still having some bugs. I believe and hope that the creator will fix them. Installing the add-on was a little bit more tricky than with other add-ons, because you will have to install additional software that is doing the simulations. After you have installed the add-on properly, you get this new tab in the Blender's N panel. So this tab here works kind of like a bridge between Blender and the Physics Solver software. I will very quickly build some sort of a test scene for us to inspect the physics of different types of objects. Okay, I don't anymore know why that segment had to be part of this video. Anyways, we are going to drop these tools through this staircase. So, what we need to do is to select the object that we want to have some physics setting, and then we go here and select what type of physics we want to apply. And this wall has to be collider, so I will do that, and then I will create new material, and let's call this collider. Now, I will select all of the objects that I want to have the same settings. Original to be active, and then copy to select it. Then I will select one of my objects that I want to drop down. Those are supposed to be an elastic bodies. Let's create new material for that. Select all of the other ones and make the original to be active, then copy to select it. Now we just have to test run simulation. It doesn't matter where you save it. So now it will start simulating those. So I think this duck is the winner of this race. Press play here to see what's happening. So fine, I think we need more of those objects now. Okay, the thing that I was afraid happened. I get this error. Invalid simulation state. Refer to the documentation for info and error handling. There is currently a bug in the software causing simulation to crash when any vertex has the set coordinate position in the world space very close to zero. Nothing should have their vertex position in this plane. Maybe at some point when they will reach this plane, some vertex will clip that. If that's the case, then let's put here another cube. And this cube will stop them. It will never be able to reach that plane. And I hope that will fix the problem. So let's try again. And then the simulation starts just fine. So it's able to simulate all of those objects. So there's nothing wrong with the topology of those. That much I know. Increase the value of substeps property. And I did that. I added 20 substeps there. Hope this will do the trick. So let's test with more of those objects. Okay, I caused the error just as expected. So this is a little bit of a problem. So this is the kind of job that you don't really wanna be doing. Okay, this is overlapping also. And this. Hey, it's simulating. So nothing is overlapping anymore. And this is going to take much longer now because we have much more objects there. But I still don't like how those are accumulating here. I also wish there was a way to see what caused the error. I mean, I would like to be able to see the last working frame from this simulation, so that would be quite helpful. I don't know if that can cause an error when it's kind of folding into itself too much. Because if you send that kind of an object there, I know that it will cause an error, but if the simulation itself is doing that, is that causing an error also? I would like to know. Also, the simulation software is messing with my brain, because it really doesn't make any sense to have two different types of navigations between the software itself and for the add-on for that software. So I think I'm happy with this now. These two, let's delete those. I do not want to see them anymore ever again. And let's delete these two, because those are useless. Maybe they will actually contribute something to this simulation. Maybe because I deleted something that the butterfly effect will cause 
some of those not dropping. If we go here to the modifiers, it will add a modifier for all of these and it will create for us the modifier called mesh sequence hack, which is named here to be V dynamics. So what that allows us to do is that we can now go here to the output tab and then we have here this time stretching and we can put here 200 frames. We can kind of slow down the simulation. So, I encountered this weird bug where the hammers and screwdrivers lost their secondary materials. So now they look like being made full of only one material when they should have metal and plastic materials. It works perfectly in viewport, but not in render and I have no idea what caused it. Maybe it was the add-on, maybe something else. I had no time to figure it out. Now that this is out of my system, let's talk about what is and isn't possible with this physics simulator. If you are the creator of this add-on, please add your comment below if you have something that you want to correct about this review or if you have plans to add something that was not in this version and I will pin your comment there. You cannot do rigid body simulations. All objects you simulate will always be soft bodies. You can change the parameters to make them a little bit more solid and some shapes seem to resist distortion more than other ones, but it's not possible to make completely solid objects. Also, the simulator is not deterministic. This means that if you run the same simulation multiple times, the results are always different. You cannot change the bounciness of the object, so basically if you drop objects from the same height, you cannot very well change how much they will bounce. I do not know how this thing was made. The way how the selected vertices are supposed to be animated remains unknown for me. I really hope that the creator will draw a tutorial that will explain how those vertices are supposed to be animated. Your objects cannot have these properties. An overlapping geometry. The shape has to have a topology that corresponds to the surface properly. Joint meshes. The shape have to be singular mesh. This doesn't work even when joint meshes are not touching each other. Objects with holes in the surface. The object has to have an unbroken surface. For example, torus shape works because the surface is unbroken, even when the shape itself represents a hole. Because of this, Susanne's head, for example, doesn't work if you don't first fix the topology to have an unbroken surface. That is also the reason why planes don't work. The shapes have to be real closed 3D geometry. So, that was my review of the V-Dynamics Blender add-on. It is a really interesting add-on and I wish the development of it will continue. Even when I was talking about some missing settings, I also very much like the simplistic approach with not too many settings. So thank you very much for watching and God bless.